Hello. Welcome back to the environmental economics course. So in this video lesson 9C, I will uh, walk you through to some uh, uh, well-known stated preference techniques. So as I mentioned uh, in the previous lessons, uh, the um, uh, so-called reveal preference techniques are very popular in economics. Uh, uh, however, they might not be able to capture, for example, existence values of, uh, of individuals. So for, for covering this kind of more, more difficult to measure existence and, and quasi option and perhaps option values also, then uh, stated preference techniques might be the uh, only possibility. So let's start with the, with the so-called contingent valuation method, uh, which is very uh, more thoroughly covered in the, in the textbook by Perman et al. So firstly, here are some, some uh, basic steps of the, of the CVM approach uh, according to the, to the textbook. So the first stage and perhaps the, also the important stage of, the, of the, any, any CVM study is to, to, to develop a survey. And uh, I will come back to this uh, question of uh, WTP, WTA. So that's willingness to, willingness to pay versus willingness to accept. Um, but the basic idea is that uh, that in the survey we we uh, describe some kind of hypothetical scenario. So I have earlier talked about some some nature reserve. So so for example, the scenario could be that uh, that uh, um, that we are considering to uh, improve protection of some endangered species in the in the uh, in this nature reserve that that would uh, very likely, for example. Um, uh, help this kind of uh, near extinct uh, uh, species to survive, and then 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 we ask uh, the respondent about uh, about uh, the individual's uh, willingness to pay. So, how much money the the individual would be willing to pay for this kind of increased protection? And then another possibility, this willingness to accept. So, WTA would be then, for example, asking it another way that. Uh, that uh, how much compensation the, the individual would require that uh, if this kind of uh, endangered species is, is uh, no longer protected and, uh, and it, it has a risk of uh, a higher risk of e extinction, for example. And then we need some kind of explanation at how this payment or compensation would be, would be paid. Uh, and having designed this kind of survey, then, then the survey is then uh, sent to some, uh, some population of interest, uh, and then we get some, some uh, responses to the survey. So third stage is then concerns the analysis, uh, and then in the analysis stage, uh, we, can, we can use then, then techniques to estimate, the, for example, what would be the average willingness to pay or average willingness to accept it, depending on what is, what is being asked. And then it's possible to also then have, for example, some confidence intervals standard errors and then then of course there can be like also then aggregation of this kind of individual level responses to the to the population and and some kind of sensitivity analysis of course as well so there is also also uh, so this this kind of kind of approaches have been used and there is a lot of lot of details that how the survey would should be should be designed and how what are these kind of best practices in the in the in the survey response so i do not go to this kind of a uh, uh, lot of details about uh, about uh, what what are the best practices in survey uh, survey studies uh, but uh, but uh, of course there are all kinds of kinds of issues that how to elicit the information from the from the survey respondents so in the textbook, uh, in the the authors express also a lot of uh, lot of concern and critique uh, regarding particularly the contingent valuation method, uh, which uh, which uh, was very popular at the time of this uh, this uh, textbook was published. Uh, so many of these issues, of course, concern 
uh, survey studies more broadly, but uh, but in uh, in for example contingent valuation method uh, there can be um, many protest responses who who are, for example uh, say that uh, the willing they they are not willing to pay anything or or they might uh, might give like very exaggerated uh, uh, willingness to pay. So um, in in many studies the the average willingness to pay appears to be very very high. That uh, that because it is kind of uh, Kind of hypothetical scenario, so so there may might be, for example, some social or cultural pressure for the response to 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 indicate very high willingness to pay, even though in reality they they might not be actually willing to pay if they were being asked to actually actually put some money on the line. So this is why very often these kind of uh, stated preference techniques tend to yield very. Uh, tend to yield somewhat higher estimates of the of the willingness to pay compared to this kind of uh, more indirect uh, reveal preference approaches. And even if we consider these uh, these kind of uh, stated preference techniques, uh, many studies indicate rather large differences between willingness to pay on one hand and willingness to accept on the other hand. So. Uh, I would say that that, that there is there is uh, this kind of um, skepticism and critique in the textbook is is perhaps to some extent also also might reflect some some prejudice by by uh, economists at the at the time this textbook was uh, was writing that uh, that uh, kind of kind of concern that how well well people respond to this kind of hypothetical questions uh, that uh, that. Um, that, for example, this uh, they, the textbook authors refer to or cite, uh, sorry, quote Peterson, nineteen ninety two, who says that that contingent valuation works uh, where it is not needed but is flawed and useless for measuring, for example, this kind of existence values. So I already mentioned, uh, to be fair, also that in the in the revealed preference methods, very often the actually data comes from some kind of survey. The question is perhaps more here that, or, or the issue whether it is survey responses or not, the more important question is perhaps that how directly we are asking people to, to indicate their, their preferences, or are, are we asking for this kind of directly that how much money you are willing to pay or or ask it more, more indirectly that, for example, in the case of travel cost method, survey respondents would be asked that okay, where where did they come to visit the the natural park, and then uh, then the researcher would infer these travel costs, or perhaps the respondents could be also asked that how much money they spent during this uh, during this kind of visit. So I think nowadays uh, economists are much more open minded towards uh, uh, survey studies, and surveys are also also used quite often also it could be like some kind of like um, more like lab experiments where where the where the people are making this kind of different types of choices so so the main difference uh, with this other reveal pre sorry stated preference technique mentioned in the in the textbook called choice modeling um so there is a couple of couple of um differences so 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 this could be organized as a survey study, or it could be kind of kind of a, a more like a, like a laboratory experiment where these uh, individuals are, are making making these kind of choices. In a, so similar to to contingent valuation, here also we we talk about uh, uh, hypothetical alternatives. Uh, uh, so so that's not uh, not really really different, uh, but maybe the way of of um, asking the people is somewhat different so in the in this ex ex example also taken from the textbook uh, the respondents are given three alternatives to to choose from and uh, alternative number one re represents the the status quo and then alternatives two and three would involve some cost to the respondent uh, but uh, but then also also some kind of uh, uh, some kind of uh, perhaps improvement in the in the degree of um, of uh, nature protection so rather than make such kind of open-ended uh, ended uh, uh, 
question that uh, rather than directly asking the people to or the survey respondents to indicate that how much they are willing to pay this choice modeling uh, does not approach the individual so directly but uh, but then then it takes perhaps a step towards more this kind of revealed preference approaches in the sense that uh, that uh, uh, these respondents are choosing among some kind of fixed number of alternatives and then based on this kind of kind of uh, uh, choices, then the researchers are inferring uh, more indirectly this kind of uh, willingness to pay or, or willingness to accept. So perhaps my main point here is that uh, that in the stated preference approaches, uh, it may, can make a lot of difference that how these questions are presented, how these kind of scenarios are also presented, and do we ask people to indicate this kind of uh, uh, amount of money directly or or do we give them some kind of uh, kind of choices or some kind of menu of choices to from which to choose and of course this kind of kind of choices uh, in the choice modeling typically then then uh, there can be like multiple stages so it's not just this kind of single single choice but uh, but then we could have like a like another kind of kind of uh, alternatives another 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 choices and uh, it's also possible to test that uh, how consistently this, uh, these uh, uh, respondents are making the choices. And, and this would be a way to also avoid this kind of protest responses who are just kind of randomly randomly indicating, indicating something. So if doing some kind of stated preference technique, it's, it's, uh, it's important to, to study more this kind of survey methodologies to avoid some kind of... Uh, Common pitfalls in the in the in the survey survey design and and uh, survey uh, survey implementation. However, of course, surveys can be also also a valuable tool and uh, and especially uh, it might be the only way to to uh, infer, for example, existence values. So finally, a little bit more in detail to the to I mentioned this willingness to pay and willingness to accept. So so it, we also find often in this kind of uh, uh, stated preference studies that uh, that if if this, it might be that the same study is is considering both willingness to pay and willingness to accept, and the results are uh, can be can be very different. But um, in some sense, this might not be also surprising. So, so if we, if we take from this, uh, this, um, uh, if we connect it more more directly now to the microeconomic theory, then uh, then in the textbook, this uh, willingness to pay and willingness to accept are are um, connected to these uh, notions of uh, contingent vari variation and uh, equivalent variation. So based on theory, we would also also accept expect that uh, that uh, willingness to accept should be larger than willingness to pay. So this falls somewhat uh, uh, beyond the course beyond the scope of the of the present course. This is actually uh, more like advanced micro theory, but I just want to want to highlight that that, that actually there is no not really. Any any reason to expect that uh, that uh, responses to willingness to pay type of questions should should yield similar results as uh, as willingness to accept, and the reason is that if we think about this equivalent variation and uh, compensating variation, the the starting point is is somewhat different, and this is illustrated by the by this kind of um, slide. So so depending on. Uh, so here is this kind of uh, two different utility levels in this in this in difference curve. So there is u zero and uh, and u one. So 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 that uh, when connecting to this kind of uh, price changes, so it's it's very much a different uh, different question. If we ask people that okay, how much uh, uh, they would be willing to how much they would be willing to pay, for example. Uh, to avoid some kind of price increase, and uh, and then another question could be that okay, what would be this kind of uh, uh, compensation that they are willing to accept this kind of price increase? So so we are comparing then very different levels of of utility. The starting point is 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 very different if it is uh, if it is uh, if it is kind of um, avoiding of some kind of damage. Or or compensation for some kind of kind of damage. 
so this is mainly mainly this kind of um um point i wanted to make but uh, but then uh, then uh, if if you are interested in going more more to the details then then these concepts of uh, compensating variation cv and equivalent variation eb are then uh, then discussed in more more in detail in advanced microeconomics courses and uh, it's possible to relate these kind of concepts to the to the willingness to pay and willingness to accept uh, and my main point here really is that uh, that uh, in theory even we we shouldn't actually expect uh, uh, that that willingness to accept uh, from some kind of stated preference technique should be the same as as willingness to pay it's somewhat somewhat then then uh, contradictory to then use this kind of argument that this this uh, studies Come up with different different willingness to pay than willingness to expect, accept estimates as somehow like a problem of the of this uh, stated preference techniques. Even if, because even in theory we don't really expect that they should yield the same results. So I will then uh, in the next video lesson I will move to the to the more to the context of. Uh, of natural resource economics, and we start in, in the theme number 10 from non-renewable resources. Thank you for your attention. See you next time. Bye-bye.